Elon Musk sits down with former President Donald Trump in an interview on X that lasts two hours. And the impact of an earthquake in Los Angeles is caught on live TV. The Morning Rundown starts now. From the Straight Arrow News Studio, bringing the stories that matter to you from across the United States and around the world, this is The Morning Rundown. Today is Tuesday, August 13th. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kara Rucker. Former President Donald Trump sat down with tech billionaire Elon Musk for a conversation that was live streamed on X. However, the broadcast began more than half an hour late due to a glitch, which Musk later attributed the technical difficulties to what he described as a cyber attack. Despite the rocky start, the conversation would then go on for more than two hours, delving into topics ranging from immigration and inflation, the assassination attempt on Trump's life, and some of Trump's top priorities if he were to win the November election. One idea the former president threw out there is potentially dismantling the Department of Education in an effort to relinquish powers from the federal entity and hand those responsibilities down to the states. Well, think of education. So we're ranked at the bottom of every list of the top 40. We're ranked number 40, number 38. In other words, horrible. And yet we spend more per pupil than any other country in the world. So we spend more. And what I'm going to do, one of the first acts, and this is where I, I need an Elon Musk. I need somebody that has a lot of strength and courage and smarts. I want to close up Department of Education, move education back to the states, after the two closed their conversation, Musk posted on X saying he would be happy to host Kamala Harris on the platform for a discussion as well. Musk endorsed Trump for president the day of his near assassination in Butler, Pennsylvania. The FBI is now investigating attempted hacks into both the Trump and Biden-Harris campaigns. The investigation includes attempted hacks targeting three Biden-Harris campaign staffers and Roger Stone, a former advisor to former President Donald Trump. Stone told The Washington Post his email had been compromised, but it's not clear if attempts to hack the Biden campaign were successful. A Harris campaign official says it does not appear to have been hacked. On Friday, Microsoft issued a report showing Iranian operatives had been trying to interfere with the 2024 election. Trump's campaign confirmed over the weekend it appears to have been impacted by those efforts after news outlets were sent hundreds of confidential pages. The White House has confirmed President Joe Biden is set to speak at the Democratic National Convention in Chicago next week. Multiple media outlets are reporting other speakers will include former President Barack Obama, former President Bill Clinton, and former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. The convention starts next Monday and will go through Thursday. Sources told ABC News the current plan is for Biden and Hillary Clinton to speak Monday night. Then former President Obama on Tuesday. Wednesday, it'll be vice presidential nominee Minnesota Governor Tim Walz and Bill Clinton. And finally, Kamala Harris is set to address the DNC on Thursday. That is a tentative schedule and could still change. National Security Advisor John Kirby says the U.S. is prepared for significant attacks by Iran or its proxies in the Middle East as soon as this week. Kirby says the U.S. has bolstered its forces in the Middle East, including sending in more troops and equipment like a guided missile submarine and a strike group of F-35s aboard the USS Lincoln. It's a rare move to publicly announce such military moves, a tactic some say is meant to de-escalate tensions in the region and deter Iran from possibly attacking. Concerns of an attack come after Iran and Hamas accused Israel of carrying out the assassination of a Hamas leader in Tehran last month. Defense officials say several U.S. service members suffered minor injuries in a drone attack in Syria on Friday. The drone targeted a landing zone which hosts U.S. and partner forces in the global coalition to defeat ISIS. U.S. Central Command says it's still evaluating the damage, but initial assessments show there was minor damage to one set of facilities. This attack was the second within a week to injure U.S. personnel who are part of the coalition to defeat ISIS. 
California was hit with another earthquake on Monday, this time directly under Los Angeles. The magnitude 4.4 quake struck at 1220 p.m. Pacific. The quake shaking the area as ESPN's live broadcast of NBA Today was on the air. And it was so much fun to see, particularly the crowd sort of getting behind as we have a bit of an earthquake here in Los Angeles. So we're just going to make sure that our studio lights, everything stays safe, everything's shaking. You good, Mylan? Everybody good? All right, thank you so much for bearing with us through that. The Los Angeles Fire Department says there have been no reports of injuries or structural damage. This latest California quake came almost a week after a magnitude 5.2 struck Bakersfield. Finally, this morning, we have the latest turn in the Olympic medal controversy involving gymnast Jordan Childs. And unfortunately, it did not go Team USA's way. On Monday, we reported the USA Gymnastics Organization sent Olympic officials what it called time-stamped video evidence that showed Childs' coach requested a review of her score within the allotted one minute, and Childs should be able to keep the bronze medal that was awarded to her following a score change. However, USA Gymnastics later released a statement on Monday saying the Court of Arbitration for Sport would not reconsider its ruling to strip Childs of the medal. But the twist to this saga may not be over just yet. USA Gymnastics saying it will continue to pursue every possible avenue and appeal process, including the Swiss Federal Tribunal to, quote, ensure the just scoring placement and medal award for Jordan. These are your top stories for this Tuesday. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Until then, I'm Kara Rucker. Have a great day.